Okay, so thank you. I'm going to talk about self-monitoring of MS, which is, as far as we see it, the new frontier. So in my presentation, I'm going to cover, first of all, what is monitoring and why bother with it? Why do we need to monitor patients with MS? And how do we currently monitor MS? What, what are the current methods that we use to do this? And do we need to change? And if we do need to change, in what way do we need to change? And what new monitoring methods are there out there? So first of all, what is monitoring? Why bother with us? Why bother with it? Well, it allows us to track the course of MS in an individual. So rather than tracking the course in a population, it allows us to do it in one person and see what MS does to that single person. It allows us to make certain decisions that are important from a medical point of view. So first of all, is there actually a need for any treatment, be that treatment to change the course of the disease or treatments such as steroids, for example, for relapses. Um, it allows us to differentiate between the different kinds of MS, for example, progressive MS versus relapsing remitting MS, which we've heard about earlier. If there is a need for treatment, then monitoring helps us to decide which treatment, as some treatments are only licensed for more severe cases or quickly cases that are quickly getting worse, whereas other treatments you would use if the disease isn't progressing so quickly. It allows us to monitor whether a treatment is effective once you actually give the treatment, and it's very important during clinical trials, which Sarah is going to talk about shortly, as to whether the new drug that you're testing actually works. If you don't monitor the course of the disease, you can't see whether you've got any effect from the drug. And is it monitoring actually important to patients? Does it actually mean anything to you? Well, yes, I think it does. And from the patients that we've spoken to, it certainly seems to. Being aware of how the disease is behaving and having some kind of objective measure of what's going on during the course of the disease. So, I said I'd talk about how we currently monitor MS. For any people on clinical trials, a lot of these words may be very familiar to you. To others, they may not be quite so familiar. So, the current way that we use to monitor in a large number of trials, and really the most commonly used technique, is called the EDSS, which stands for the Expanded Disability Status Scale. This is formed of a number of scores. From, For example, we would look at people's strength, their sensation, vision, walking, to name but a few, and combine the scores to come up with an overall score, which is between 0 and 10, where 0 is somebody who has nothing wrong with them that we can find on examination, and the higher scores indicate higher disability. Now, the EDSS is assessed by a neurologist. It involves an examination from a neurologist, and there's problems with that which we will come on to. So as I said, you have a score between 0 and 10. As you can see from the diagram, the lower stages, so between about 1 and 3, are done just by findings on examination. And the higher stages, above about 5, are patient, uh, when there's more difficulty with walking, and really other parts um, of potential disability or problems that you may have with your MS don't, um, aren't taken into account at higher scores. Another outcome that's used for another way of monitoring is something called the MSFC, which is a little bit more difficult to explain, but it stands for Multiple Sclerosis Functional Composite. It's made of a number of things. First of all, arm and hand function, which is done by what's called the nine hole, hole peg test, where you see how quickly somebody can put all the pegs in the holes and then take them out again. This is done with each hand, and you can measure this over time to see any change. If the hand becomes weaker or less well coordinated, then the time will increase. So it gives you a good measure that you can reproduce on several occasions. To assess concentration and memory, we use a test called PASAT, which um, is a little bit more difficult to explain, but it's the ability to remember numbers and add them up. So those of you that have had it will know it's quite difficult to do. I struggle with it sometimes. But you have to remember the numbers and add them up and the number, you record the number that are correct. And then also a 25 metre timed walk, which is fairly self-explanatory. 